Thank you so much for coming and joining us for the second annual Delaware Days Festival. Um, we're so glad that you're here. And uh, it's my privilege and honor to introduce the Cumberstown Mayor, Jim Friel, good friend. And uh, we're just so glad for his hard work and, and everything he does for our village. So can you give him a bit of Cumberstown welcome this morning? This is the second annual celebration. I was here last year to give a little talk on the history of the village of Becoming Town, and they asked me back again. So, what I'm going to read to you is a little bit of history of how Newcomers Town was formed and who was involved in it. There was a gentleman by the Nic name of Nicholas Neighbor, who was the first child, third generation of a Leonard Neighbor, who immigrated from Germany to the United States in 1814. Nicholas Neighbor emerged from emigrated from German Valley, New Jersey, to the Tuscross County, <coughs> Tuscross Valley, <coughs> excuse me. He was taken in by the area that so much that he purchased 1,900 acres of land located in the southwest corner of Tuscross County, which became known as Oxford Township. Nicholas returned to German Valley, New Jersey, to bring the news about the land in Ohio and returned to Ohio with a colony from German Valley. And many among them were families of the Leonard neighbor in 1815, Nicholas Neighbor made the final payment of the 1,900 acres of land in New Philly in the Tuscarawas County seat. The settlement at the time was known as Neighbor Town. The Neighbor family plotted and plotted out their property and built their homes for their family. In 1827, the Ohio Canal was constructed through the Tuscarawas Valley. This brought hope and good fortune for those in Newcomers Town. Newcomers Town became a thriving community, and Newcomers Town or, excuse me, Nicholas Neighbor was a wick in politics. He voted in favor of Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Harrison, and Clay. Nicholas also served in, in the, his country in the Revolutionary War. Nicholas married Catherine Sharp, who lived and died in New Jersey. They raised low children. Nicholas met and married Hannah Urick in Ohio. Nicholas went on to be an associated judge for Tuscarawas for 14 years. He was Lutheran by faith for nearly 70 years. He was a merchant and a most exemplary and highly esteemed citizen. He was known as the good old Nicholas neighbor. It is said that he is, that Nicholas was the first to be buried in the new cemetery. David neighbor was one of the members of the colony that came with Nicholas neighbor. David was one of the founders of the settlement that in his day was known as Neighbor Town. It was three years after his death that the village was regularly laid out here and given the name of Newcomers Town. By the roots, by the roadside where the main travel trail of the valley crossed David Neighbor's farm, afterward was known as State Route, was built one of the first homes in the new settlement. The town of Newcomers Town grew with the Ohio Canal when the Ohio Canal was constructed and completed. This brought business and an opportunity to the community. As time went on, the country became involved in the Revolutionary War between the states. Five generations after Leonard Neighbor, there was Souther, Souther, Meek, and David Neighbor were officers in the Revolutionary War. Souther was a captain in Company D-52 Regiment. He led his men up Kennesaw Mountain in Marietta, Georgia. During the battle, he was wounded mortally wounded. He was brought back to Newcomers Town and buried in the Newcomers Town Cemetery, in the new cemetery. David Neighbor was also wounded in that battle and was a lifelong sufferer with an injury to his limb. And I will note that if you go to Marietta, Georgia, there is an actual monument for Nathaniel Me Neighbor that explains that, uh, who he is and where he came from. There is actually, it says that he's from Newcomers Town. The information I have came from a publication written by Lambert Bowman Neighbor, who's the fifth generation of Leonard Neighbor. There are still descendants of the Neighbor family living in Newcomers Town. There was an Annabelle Neighbor, the daughter of Jacob Neighbor, who lived on what they called the hill. 
she married a Joe Kaiser, who was a well-known barber in Newcomers Town. Joe and Anna Kaiser are the grandparents of my wife, Patty Kaiser Creel. dramatic reenactment of Zeisberger and Chief Netherlands. Please give this wampum belt and this invitation to David Zeisberger. I have known of his works in the East in Frieden, Frieden style. It would, I would be grateful for him to come and give consideration to do the same works he was doing in the East in Pennsylvania, to bring his people from his mission and the praying Indians that are working with him. Because I've, I've seen the great change in them, in the people and the work that he, they are doing. They're healthy, they're well-mannered, they're not plagued with alcohol or sickness and disease, much like Newcomers Town is. And I would greatly love to talk about his Lord and Savior and the things that he can do for our, our people. So please make haste and give that to him. Chief Nottawatawees would love for you to come speak to our people about your faith in your God. Thank you. Thank you. This is a correspondence from Chief Nettawatawees. You remember the Lenape chief that visited us five years ago? He asked us to graciously consider coming to visit him so he can talk to us about bringing the entire mission to the Tuscarora's River Valley. This just might be the hand of God. What do you think? It can't hurt us to go speak to him as we are ever hard pressed here to keep the mission free from the increasing corruption all around us. And was it not just a little while ago in prayer and conversation we wondered if it might be good to consider moving our mission? Let us lay this before the Savior in prayer and see if we're to make plans to go talk with the chief. Let's pray. He has given us consideration to come and do his mission in our valley to save our people. Chief, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the good faith that you have sent and, and the honor to be with your people. Thank you so much. We're honored to be here. I, I want to take a few moments on your request to talk to you about our Lord and Savior. Would that be okay? Please speak freely. Chief Netawatoes, I know that you are familiar with the holy book given to us from God Almighty. In God's holy book, he says to all people everywhere, to my people and to your people, for we are all his children. All people are under the great power of sin. As it is written, there are no righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They've together become worthless. And there's no one who does good. Not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. 
Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, and their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. God says that the wages of sin is death, eternal death and judgment. And God's face is not happy because of this. God sees his people, and nothing is hidden from his eyes. God knows our hearts. He sees our lives, and he sees our sinful ways. He's not happy that the evil spirit Satan has deceived his people and tempted them to sin with deceitful lives. So God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, because he loves you and your people, all people, all over the earth. Jesus, God's son, came to us in the form of a man. He was born as a baby to a virgin named Mary. His birth was announced by angels and celebrated by wise men. He did many miracles. He changed water to wine. He calmed stormy seas. He blessed a lad's lunch and fed 5,000 men and their families. He gave sight to the blind. He healed the deaf and the mute. He caused the lame to walk, to jump, and to run. He healed leprosy. He was powerful and drove out evil spirits that tormented men, women, and children. And he forgave people for their sins. He is kind and he is loving. But the leaders of his day hated him and they were jealous of him. They did not believe that he was God's son. And they seized him in the middle of the night, told lies about him, had him beaten and tortured, and finally they killed him by hanging him on a tree. The holy prophet Isaiah says of Jesus, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned away to our own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. In the New Covenant, the Apostle Paul says, God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He appeared to many of his disciples and followers, 500 people in all. And then again, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of God our Father. So Chief Netawatoes, I have come to tell you about Jesus. Just like the holy men came to tell me many years ago when I lived in Moravia, far across the great Atlantic Sea. When I heard what Jesus did for me to rescue me from my sins in this present evil age, I confessed my sin and turned from my sin and turned to obeying the teachings of Jesus, God's Son. Jesus appeared to me and asked me to leave my home in Moravia and get on a large ship and come to America to tell your people about this powerful Son of God. So I've spent many years in the East preaching and teaching the good news that Jesus died for our sins and on the third day was resurrected. And soon, one day, he is coming to earth and will set up his kingdom, his righteous kingdom on earth. And every man and every woman and every child from every nation and every tribe and every kindred and tongue will bow their knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I am here because God said, I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they might receive forgiveness of sin and place a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me the worst of sinners Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. All this is from God, who reconciled to himself through Christ Jesus, each one of us, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, 
but he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We, th therefore, are Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And as I said, Chief, when I heard that Jesus died for me to rescue me from my sins in this pr present evil age, I confessed my sins and I turned from my sins and determined to obey the teachings of Jesus, God's Son. And we're here. I am here. On God's behalf, asking you if you and your people will do as I have done. What many other noble Lenape people have done in the East. Will you confess your sin and turn from evil and follow the teachings of Jesus, God's Son? We're all here today, descendants of a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and laid a foundation that every one of us stand on. Hebrews says there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, watching over our lives, and looking, to, looking for us to complete what Jesus began. Over 200 years ago, and I know the story began long before that here in that, this valley, but over 200 years ago, 90 men, women, and children were so committed to their faith that they laid their lives down for that faith. And on a very fateful night, they lost their lives. But as they were being killed, they sang hymns to God and prayed. And they were ushered into the presence of God Almighty. Not one of them recanted. Not one of them turned. Every one of them laid a foundation of faith. Two years ago when we held a community service in Schoenbrunn in the rebuilt village, in that rebuilt chapel, as we were praying for this valley and praying for us and praying for you, God began to show us that there was a great well that was underneath this land. Certainly, there's a spring in Schoenbrunn, but there's a spiritual well that has been dug. People left their homes and their communities, both those who call this their land and those of us who have come from different lands. They laid their lives down to see that people would come to know Jesus Christ so that there would be a relationship with God. And it was as if, as we were praying, they joined us that day. And we could feel the presence of that cloud of witnesses surrounding us as we were praying. And it was, you know what, it was hot. It was a hot summer night. <laughs> it, was, it was 90 degrees outside and humid, and it was 147, I think, inside that chapel. But we could sense the presence of God. And I want you to know that I am here. I can trace some of my lineage on my grandfather's side back to Moravia. I don't know that I'm a direct descendant, but I will tell you this, that God spoke to me and said, Brent, I want you and Lisa to be missionaries to the Tuscarawas Valley. And I am here and we're all committed to seeing the ways of Christ brought to every single person's heart and life. We're going to pray in just a moment. But I want you to know that there are a lot of people, those of us that are, are in costume and some others that, um, that are here, that would be willing to pray with you today. We believe that God still heals. We believe that God still brings hope. And whatever we can do, if we can pray for you, put a hand on your shoulder, or just encourage you today, that's what we're here to do. But I have this un- deniable conviction that the presence of God is moving in our valley. 
there is coming a day very soon when his presence is going to sweep through our homes and our community. And I believe you and I are a part of that. And I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready for, for well, what God is going to complete. What was started 200 some years ago, I don't think is finished yet. The dreams of the native people and the dreams of the Moravians, the dreams of the colonists, even the dreams of the British have not yet been seen. But I believe God has his hand on this valley and he's going to do an awesome work. And so would you allow me to pray and bless you? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that your presence is already abiding in this valley that your presence is on this property and that you love this people. Lord, you're for us, not against us. You love us. You haven't come with judgment. You've come with hope and forgiveness, faith and love. So Lord, I just ask that you would release your presence across this festival today that every single person might have a divine encounter with you and know that you love them, that you are their Lord and you are their Savior. Lord, we thank you that you're going to do miracles, that you're going to heal people, that you're going to touch people's lives and you're going to bring emotional and physical and relational and financial healing. And lastly, Lord, we just bless this valley. We bless this valley with your prosperity. We ask, Lord, that businesses will spring up and will allow that there to be righteous men and women who will employ people and give them a decent day's wage. And, and God, that you'll bring prosperity back to this valley. You'll provide for needs. That, Lord, you will break the bondages of, of alcoholism that we still struggle with and other addictions we still struggle with that keep people enslaved rather than free to accomplish what you call them to do. So, Lord, we release your blessing over this crowd and over our town and over our valley. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.